I referenced last week the sudden demise of the world's greatest Torah scholar, Rav Chaim Kanievsky, which had occurred only hours prior. With the benefit of a week's reflection, I'd like to share an additional observation relating to the rabbi's legendary program of daily Torah study. Every night, Rav Kanievsky would arise shortly after midnight, first saying special prayers known as Tikkun Chatzot, before commencing a mind-boggling register of learning, including 11 pages of Zohar, the Kabbalistic text, 10 chapters of Tehillim, or Psalms, 8 chapters of Tanakh, the Bible, 8 chapters of Rambam, Maimonides, 10 sections of Torah Shulchan Arach, Code of Jewish Law, 10 sections of Mishtabura, 8 pages of Babylonian Talmud, 8 pages of the Jerusalem Talmud, 8 chapters of Midrash, 8 pages of the Ari's Kabbalistic writings, and 8 pages of Ramchal's Kabbalistic writings. The sum total of this catalog meant that he completed the entire corpus of primary Torah texts known as Kol HaTarakula every single year. More on all this in a moment. This week we read about the tragic death at the hand of heaven of Nadav and Avihu, two sons of Aaron, the high priest, as well as Moshe's brother. The story, which occurs one year after the Exodus, at the conclusion of the dedication of the Mishkan, or Tabernacle, is actually repeated multiple times throughout the Torah. When Aaron learns of this unimaginable calamity, his response, as the Torah records, is Vayidom Aharon. Difficult to translate, this phrase seems to denote silence or stillness. For example, elsewhere in the biblical canon, with respect to Elijah, we hear of the Kol de Mamal Daka, the small, still voice. A Barvanel connects our verse to the word domeim, something lifeless, like a stone, meaning that Aaron did not weep and was rendered speechless. Clearly, Aaron displayed a remarkable degree of resilience and equanimity amidst unspeakable personal suffering. For this, the Talmud notes that he was rewarded with an exclusive communication from God in the section that follows. Rabbi Ari Khan explains the connection. The very silence that Aaron demonstrated is precisely what precipitated the divine call, much like the stillness mentioned above allowed Elijah to hear the voice of God. By listening attentively in our own moments of turmoil, we can absorb messages we might otherwise miss. The quietness and acceptance make space for a subtler, deeper voice to emerge. Last night, I attended an evening of eulogies for Rav Kanievsky. Referencing his prodigious daily learning schedule, one of the speakers noted that he would normally complete this massive annual undertaking on Erev Pesach, the day before Passover. However, in Jewish leap years, an extra month is added. Traditionally, Rabbi Kanievsky would therefore fulfill his study plan on Purim instead, then write a novel Torah commentary with the extra month of Nisan. And then, reflecting quietly on this fact, it struck me. This year is a leap year, and the great rabbi passed away on the day after Purim, known as Shushan Purim, meaning he completed his annual study cycle, celebrating an incredible achievement for perhaps the 70th or 80th time, and then he returned his soul to his maker. The Talmud tells us praiseworthy is he who comes to the next world with Talmudo Biyado, his learning in his hand, meaning his understanding of Torah is comprehensive and crystal clear. And that is precisely perfectly what Rav Kanievsky did. The simple poetry of this observation is astounding. Rarely in our world do we enjoy a glimpse into the beyond, but such remarkable symmetries beyond the possibility of coincidence supply such a flash by quieting our own minds in the face of loss. We too can hear the call of the divine in our otherwise chaotic and confusing world. Shabbat Shalom.